Hi guys, my name is Peter and welcome to another Mac Deep Dive video. Today I'm looking at this big boy, the M4 Mac Studio, and I'm going to examine in detail how well it performs in high performance computing. And I'm going to compare it against this M1 Mac Mini from 2020. What do you think? How much better is the studio? Well, stick around and find out. Using the programming language Julia, I will compute the multiplication of two dense matrices. To start off, I use the basic linear algebra library provided with Julia to compute the matrix product in double precision, aka FP64. Matrix multiplication is a highly optimized operation and we can expect it to perform close to the peak performance of a machine. This is a typical example of a compute bound calculation. In other words, the performance will typically not be constrained by the memory but instead by the compute capabilities of the CPU. To multiply two square matrices of size n by n takes n cube operations, but there is only an n square amount of data. Visualize it as a surface of data and a cube of arithmetic operations. In other words, to compute matrix multiplication, many more operations are performed for each data movement. This is a great way to test the peak performance of a system, which is the intention of this video. Important to keep in mind here is that we are using generic matrix multiplication kernels, which are not optimal for all matrix sizes. Furthermore, under multi-core load, Apple machines throttle down the clock speed. Therefore, the throughput we will observe will be lower than the theoretical maximum. Looking at the power meter, the M4 Max is drawing slightly over 110 watts from the wall plug, stressing just the 12 performance cores. The maximum power load Apple specifies for this model is 145 watts, but I've seen it go well above that level under stress. And the results are in. Curiously, the M1 is much closer to its theoretical peak than the M4 Max. I suspect that this is due to a combination of poorer multi-core scaling and possibly a higher degree of throttling on the M4 Max. As the next step, I perform the same operation in single precision, aka FP32. We can expect close to double the performance in this case, as Apple CPUs have doubled the throughput in single precision. Again, the M1 is much closer to its theoretical peak whereas the M4 manages only 73% of its theoretical peak performance. Now, I will reroute the basic linear algebra routines to Apple's Accelerate library, which is able to take advantage of dedicated matrix engines in the CPUs, aka AMX, Apple Matrix Extension. The M1 Mini has one matrix engine and the M4 Max has two of them. They are primarily optimized for FP32 operations and execute FP64 operations in emulation mode. As you can see, the blast routine was routed to the two AMX engines, each of which loads up only one performance core during execution. The other 10 cores idle throughout this test. This leaves quite a bit of performance untapped. The power draw is much lower this time around at about 32 watts. It looks like Apple optimized energy efficiency over performance. Finally, I will perform the same test in single precision. We can expect much better performance this time around as the AMX engines are leveraged to their full ability. As we can see, the M4 Max achieved a whopping 3 teraflops of throughput, almost 3 times as much when using just the CPU cores and this was with 10 performance cores idling. To put this into perspective, this is about the same level of performance one could expect from the top of the line Ryzen 9950X, but at several times lower power draw. This brings us to the end of today's video. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.